Hey, I'm Erin Sloan. And I'm Paul Gray. And while this is our second straight year of Virtual Weekend Update, we're just happy we can bring you the top PAX news stories from this past school year. Absolutely. So let's jump right into it. This year has been one for the ages. Up until the third marking period, all schooling at PHS was done virtually through the use of Microsoft Teams. And I think we can all agree when I say virtual le learning is not any fun. Being behind the screen and not in the classroom has certainly led to students spending maybe a little bit more time curled up in their bedrooms, playing a few video games rather than focusing on their studies. Recently, it has been discovered that teachers are also having a little hard time focusing with virtual teaching, especially when independent work is being assigned. Our camera recently uncovered footage from earlier in the school year in which teachers, we found out how teachers spent their time when the mics were off and the cameras were off. Let's take a look. All right, um, so hey, let's do this. Let's take 30 minutes to work independently on this discussion question set um, for this assigned chapter, right? I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to turn my video camera off so you can focus, but I'm here. Just let me know if you guys have any questions, all right? So, 30 minutes here. Mm, what am I going to do? Actually, I know exactly what I'm going to do. First. Go! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you sure this is a good idea? No, but let's do it. Girl, you knock me out. Hey guys, um, so listen, finish those discussion questions for homework tonight if you're still working on them. Uh, looks like you're doing a great job. I'll see, I'll see you Wednesday. All right. Bye. Wow. Uh, that was something, I guess. I can't talk, though. I probably did finish a few Netflix series, Tiger King, during that time. But, you know, it wasn't all bad. One thing that most people can agree upon is that the time with virtual learning allowed pet owners to spend more time with their furry, furry family friends. Yeah, I love how much time I've been able to spend around my pup. And Loki and Mr. Silky have definitely been spoiled in the Sloan household. But there have been recent reports that some people have become just a little, have spent a little too much time with their pets. I'm not sure that's possible. Well, let's check out some of the footage and then you can decide for yourself, Bob. Okay, so clase para la actividad uno, lo que tienen que hacer. Sadie, is that how Rolly eats? 
Show me again. So, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That I, that I, that I don't do. But it does look like it runs in the PHS family. Breaking news: We just received word that history teacher Mr. Becknell has just received a landmark achievement. Let me get this right. It says it looks like he is officially the most watched teacher on TikTok. A total of 23 followers and his most viral video just hit 22 likes. Amazing! Our crew just wrapped up a brief interview with the social media kingpin. Let's see what he had to say. Mr. Bicknell. Mr. Bicknell. What's up? We just want to know, your viewers want to know, how have you been handling your recent TikTok fame? Um, so it's been difficult. Um, I've lost a lot of sleep because my phone is just constantly dinging all night long with people liking it and viewing my post. Um, it's really hard having about like 380 followers. It's hard to keep up with that many. Um, I know a lot of people can't reach it. Um, I've been icing my hand because I just scroll through it so much and trying to keep track of everything. Um, but sometimes I've had some really awkward moments with it. Oh, hey, Mr. Bicknell. How's it going, Noah? What are you doing here? Hey, it's a little lunch conversation, some gossip. You know, I've been seeing you blowing up on TikTok. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much, man. I, I like me a man who's famous. Oh, you do? Yeah. You want to take a selfie with me? Yes. I'll take... Let me sign your phone case first for Actually, you. Actually, no, 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 please. Oh, the... even I, better. I find your lunch in your trash can, and I want you to sign it, please. Oh, you want to try some of the broccoli, too? Yeah. And I'll sign those for you as well. There you go, sir. Don't don't be sending that for money or anything. It's just for you. No, just for me. Trust me. Come on, get in here, Mr. Beckham. Jeez. We've just been told that Mr. Bicknell's restraining order against that young man has been approved. The price of fame. When PHS began their hybrid learning approach, students who chose to return to school noticed pretty quickly there were a few changes in the building. One big change has been the operation of the cafeteria and what's available for lunch. Students get two lunch options a day and pick up a meal in the to-go box and bring it back to their designated lunch classroom. And while the operation is efficient, many of the students are missing the vast options that were available on the a la carte line. Some teachers decided to check out what all the uproar was about for themselves and rated a few recent lunches. Let's check out their reactions. All right, Kelly, trying to talk some chicken. One bite, everybody knows the rules. Good and crispy. A little dry in the center. Got some corn mixed in with it. That's always good. No vegetable. <laughs> what would you rate this? I give it a 6.8. That's 6 score. 8. Here it is. One that. bite. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> well, it looks like cardboard. I'm so scared. Tastes like cardboard too. <laughs> Cheese is like like cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> crust though, the crust. Cardboard. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> um, I'd give it a 10. It was good. I like cardboard. You're ready. Alright, uh, one bite pizza review. We've got bagel pizza. As we can see, just first look. Pretty good quality, just like you get from the supermarket. Here we go. We got a piece of corn there. That's pretty good. Mm. Bagel's a little soft. Sauce, pretty good. The cheese is excellent. I'd say 
for pizza and bagel pizzas, I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of ten. Mm. <laughs> All right. We're going with these um, pancakes in a pouch because that's normal. They're a little damp, so that's a good start. There is zero syrup, and that is an abomination, so negative four points already. Um, <laughs> one bite, everyone knows the rules. pandemic first began to impact our daily lives, we saw an overwhelming swell in panic buying of items such as toilet paper and disinfecting spray. And recently, due to the temporary Carolina pipeline shutdown, people lined major roadways just trying to fill their car and the other 12 gas tanks hiding in their trunk. It's crazy. Why would anyone want to hoard items like that? It's just creating a shortage that way. Well, you'd be surprised what people believe is worth buying in bulk. Our cameras recently unearthed some shocking photos of a few of our own teachers leaving stores full, excuse me, leaving stores with carts full of the most peculiar items. Let's check them out. Mr. Goldstein, if the world was ending, what would you panic buy? What would I want? <laughs> panic buy. What would I panic buy? I got it. Coffee. If it was ending, I would probably panic by a monkey, or like some animal like a goat, a sloth, maybe a lion. Spaghettios and bagel bites. Uh, I think I would go to like all the animal shelters and like take all the dogs and then just have them live in my backyard. Uh, if the world was ending, here's what I'd do. I would break into the Palace of Versailles in Paris and I would go into the Hall of Mirrors and I'd steal the third mirror to the left and I would sell it on the black market and I'd make money and I'd be rich. Seems logical enough to me. It's time in our broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, where we bring you this year's PHS lookalikes. Yes, and we have a great lineup for you this year. And if you haven't seen some of these people much recently due to COVID, this will help to jog your memory about what they look like. First, we have Mr. Sears. Let's follow that up with David Twiggs' twin. Now we have Jasmine Pitcher, and an individual that looks so much like her, they could be twins. Mr. Watson and this burly fella definitely share some similar qualities. Rose Winter has switched up her look, but last year she could have been mistaken for this singing sensation. Without the dreads this year. And finally, the similarities between Mr. Walzer and this vibrant item are just too good to pass up. How are you today, sir? My hands are tired. Your hands are tired? Um, English ivy. Your hands are tired? What? It's an invasive species. Yeah, I te teach invasive species, you, but... You know that, right? Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Awful. Came from England. English ivy. Yeah, you know, that's why they call it, I think, they call it that. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, why do your hands hurt? Terrible roots. Pulling. Okay, there's yeah. Roundup and such you don't need? Yeah, I tried dynamite a couple of years ago. Dynamite! <laughs> so yeah. how did that work out? Uh, 
my wife didn't like where I put the pool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Kitty, kitty pool? No, big pool. <laughs> big, big pool. One big pool. Full yeah. stick of dynamite, huh? Yeah, lots of dynamite. Yeah. yeah. So then what was, happened? You know, it was nice for a year. Um, I'm sure it was. Yep. And then? It got clogged up. Yeah. English ivy, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a thrill to come in here on your show. Yeah, well, unfortunately, my director is telling us that we do not have a lot of time left, so um, we're going to wrap it up. We're going we're gonna to stop talking. We've got lots more. No, we're going to no, we're gonna stop talking. This has been Weekend Updates. Um, I'm Paul Gray. I'm Aaron Sloan. And that's not Mr. Coombs. And I'm all by myself. <laughs>